On two visits, I've spent four months there. That's the yeah. first span of time. What's it like for birding? Uh, yeah, it's, the problem is finding somewhere to bird. Uh -huh. Most of the stuff's been destroyed and right. you have vast distances to cover to get to good habitat. But once you get there, it's very good. Is it? Mm, but yeah. patchy sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. But they're keen on birders going there now, aren't they? They seem to be. They're keen on tourism, definitely. And once you get there, you know, they're, they're quite friendly. Are they? Mm. Yeah, it's not bad. Mm. Food all right? Uh, I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like your Chinese takeaway at all. Earlier this year in Venezuela, Graham picked up 550 species in three weeks, and he tackles everything at that pitch. Two o'clock at Keyhaven, where a grey phalarope's been reported on Pennington Marshes. Now that'd be a first-class year tit for me. Anyway, when we get on that sea wall, we shall see better. Where to start, that's the question. It's only a little tiny bird and it could be anywhere in that sea of grass. Well, which side are we trying first? Black-headed gull, that's common enough here. Red shank. You've just got to look everywhere at everything. And there's a grey plover. A nice bird on its own, really. It took us an hour, but with a bit of local help, Graham picked it up. These little ocean wanderers leave the high Arctic after the nesting season and can end up anywhere from the Pacific and the Atlantic and over into the Indian Ocean. And amazingly, they live right out at sea for months at a time. Bird of the day. Out. Yeah. Certainly turned the look since this morning, hasn't it? Could have only improved though, couldn't it? Oh, right. well, we couldn't do much worse than we did, but that's nice. Definitely a bird of some character is that little performer, isn't it? Usually do, doesn't they? Yeah, it usually usually to, perform well. It doesn't seem to care about anything or anybody. I hope the sacred ibis going left here. Uh, uh, my god, I wonder where that's escaped from. I wonder if thought southern Iraq anyway. Uh, don't suppose there's the remotest chance of a tick? Well. No, well. Your well, friends are desperate, yeah. Man. Well, I'm not that desperate, yeah. I might have been this morning, but I think I've recovered a bit since then. That sacred ibis was a lovely bird, but untickable. It was without doubt an escape, not a genuinely wild bird. Okay for the day's notes, but not for the tick list. It's a right business is getting birds onto your list, because at the end of the day, it depends what standards you're prepared to accept. Over at the other side of the marsh now, late afternoon and a sea of grass to look over. Plenty of white dots out there, and two of them should be little egrets. Important to me, because I need one for my British list. It's hard work staring into all that grass with the light going. But there's one out there, and it was seen only a matter of minutes ago. I must say, by this time, I was beginning to feel a bit tired. So it was only the thought of an addition to my list that was keeping me going. We seemed to trek for miles. And then out there in the grass, one little white dot that wasn't a gull. It was an egret, and it was little, and it was okay by me. It might not look very much out there, just a little white dot. But I was glad to get it on my list. And I didn't feel so bad, really, about not seeing every detail, because I had the experts with me, and, of course, other people had been watching it all day. So that was a nice addition. Ah. Well, that's put Little Egret on my official British list. Long overdue, 
Uh, What's that with? Is this phone bill? It's phone bill up with it. But enough's enough. It's getting dark now. Time for a pint, a pie, and a phone call before we hit the road again. Group Chew Valley Lake in Hampshire, still four little egrets under Great Buffer Oak at Key Haven, but negative news from Hampshire, no sign of the bed sandpiper at Farlington Marshes. Full details on the rest of the news as follows. Right, what do you fancy then? Right now we're going to Scotland for lesser yellow legs, lesser goldie. Or because this is a blind strike in Somerset, which is apparently a male, which is interesting. Where's that one gone? That's the one at Minehead Golf Course. So that's I think that's favourite, isn't it? I mean, so it's my line strike. I could get to uh, motoring now, I could get there, get keep down somewhere for night and get it at first light, perhaps. Well, we're going to keep up there till first light. I might have guessed a wooded glade somewhere in the West Country. Now that's my idea of hell. I must say, after the sort of night I'd had, I was more in need of sleep at the end of it than I was at the beginning. Ah, the simple joys of twitching. What a night. Oh, there are twinges that well, haven't been twinges for years. <coughs> Ooh, I think I prefer four star bird into this. Ah. Ignoring the beauties of Thomas Hardy's Wessex countryside, I insisted that we hurried on to a coffee shop for a transfusion. Then things started to look a little better. The moment of truth in mine head, and the madding crowd was already there ahead of us. The look of intense concentration on every birder's face, and the baffled expression on every golfer's, told us that the bird was still there. And what a gem it was. No golf course birdie this, no eagle, nor an albatross, but a mega tick. Latecomers rolled up as if to view the holy grail. The Isabeline shrike comes from Asia Minor and the Middle East and feeds on small animals and large insects. There's only been a handful seen in Britain, so this is a really important bird. Never was an event on a golf course so watched, even up the road where the Ryder Cup was being played for. This is a second ever for me, and it's an absolute gem. That's a crack. I mean, you've got the fine detail there, haven't you? Yeah, you've got sunshine and close views. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. I don't know for long, but enough there to say it's a first year bird. Yeah, I say we an yeah. adult wouldn't have all these yeah. sort of fine yeah. bearing and bearing yeah. on the crown. Those are crescents on the flanks are really showy in a good mm. front view, aren't they? Oh, that and I read that to be a lot yeah. thicker and a lot more obvious. Yeah. All the way down. Yeah. And the old mantle as well. I read yeah. that young red back yeah. shark it have uh, a lot yeah. of bearing on there. So opinion then what, first year male? Because it's got oh, a good mask, yeah. don't it? Mm. Bird of the weekend then. No, oh, without a doubt. Definitely. Up to now, anyway. Oh, up to now, yeah. When you see a bird like that well, that is complete yeah. satisfaction, I think. Makes all the difference, doesn't yeah. it, if you get views like that. I'm only probably see which direction we're going to head. Just doing something nice to point his nose as home, eh? 
We were all in high spirits after the Isabeline strike, and it was only a second for them as well. And don't forget, these lads are ones who walk two weeks up the Himalayas, ticking everything as they go, and they did all the Florida specialities in 14 hours. They don't like to waste daylight. So, another phone call, time for a meal, and then we were off again to the next spot.